okay now probably this is another one that I it's very close to me dear to me and um, might not speak to all of you unless um, you've been through this um, um, discussion with the Lord as he was sending you and um, you you felt um, much less than the task let's call it that way insufficient <laughs> even incapable um, but the word was so huge and so powerful that you have you know him and you take that very seriously um, but it's the task and the sending and the mission it's uh, huge of course looking back I'm thinking I I didn't want to be any less than what he wanted to do I loved the challenge and maybe you are in the place where you've been challenged um, I think these words will help you. I'm trying to imagine how little and insignificant, at least at that time, uh, Moses felt no, creden no credentials, a very um, um, not worthy type of person. To go to the biggest king of li alive, the king of Egypt, and tell him, the king, what to do, what he wants him to do. <laughs> Almost laughable. And um, that's that's not just. Uh, let, let me let me show you in the scripture where I got this um, understanding about Moses. I totally feel with that guy. <laughs> Exodus 5 1. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, um, Did I hear you right? How, how, did, how did you even get here? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. So they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please, let us go three days journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. He fall upon us? Have mercy on us. Our God is very strict and serious about this. Um, so please, can you let us go? <laughs> Do do you see how they kind of uh, dim down and um, kind of mellowed out a little bit as Pharaoh was like, hey, but I don't know that God, I, you know, I got lots of gods here and I am a God too, so who are you guys? That's, that's where I felt um, with Moses really um, kind of kind of checking did I actually see that was it just a vision maybe it was a dream that burning bush maybe it was a dream was that for real <laughs> he kept thinking about that what am I doing here <laughs> I could have been with my wife and kids and the sheep and just have a normal life what am I doing here? <laughs> it 
See, for um, for a long time, I realized that here in uh, in America, we were pretty much undercover, camouflaged, and that was good for a while. Except if you say something, or you have a YouTube channel, or an Instagram post or something, you know, it's the, the 20, 30, 100 people might care a little bit, but, you know, not in the millions. <laughs> um, and no, the, the White House is not going to invite you to, uh, to dinner to tell them something. <laughs> um, I remember one time in a, in my in my search because it's you know people think the the calling of the lord is so real his words are so amazing powerful uh, they are so significant how can i get to fulfill that i'll make you a lie to the nations and look at that prophet that talks to the prime minister here and look at that apostle that does that and it's like uh moses really who's that <laughs> i remember there was um one time this opportunity quote unquote and they were looking for some i think some girls that were lost and it was this uh, kind of serial killer and some guy that was hiding them and i had this gift so i could see where they were so of course it's like um i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to the police and maybe they'll take me seriously and i can use this gift later on i found out that the police actually uses this kind of seers to find things and find people and I mean it's it's a good thing to to save the life of especially the kids and people that are lost and um, <laughs> also later on I found out there is a group on the internet where they they do the lost and found kind of you know so if you lost your ring you you put him on the Facebook or you know some some kind of a social media group and they have uh, impressions and they see your ring it's probably under the bed and did you check the bathroom and so different people have all this th type of impressions of the lost and found and um, uh, yeah no comments okay um, but I'm so thankful the Lord didn't let me get involved in that. And even if some things would come so easy with this uh, seeing type of gift, He didn't let me get involved in that. And um, it's good to be anonymous. <laughs> I love it until he says go to the king of egypt and say something and you are trained to face that rage of the big names and important people um so um, moses got really hit it was very hard for him and maybe it would have been for all of us for any of us that so if you read in Exodus 5:23, um, he is disappointed disappointed in God disappointed in his mission and he says since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name he has done evil to these people neither have you delivered your people at all i mean i thought it's an easy done thing i mean you are god i mean you you are the creator i i i thought i've seen the most powerful of all 
I don't care what he was saying. And I thought I'm going in there and I snap my fingers and that guy falls on his face and worships me and I'm telling him what to do. I'm becoming the king. I just snap of the fingers. <laughs> um, I guess the whole chapter 5, if you have patience to read, Pharaoh actually made the, the job of the Hebrews much harder. Much harder. The oppression, actually, the slavery was worse. See, one thing you have to understand the moment the word comes from the Lord, the moment He comes and talks to you, that moment God is extremely serious about what He said. With every word. And at the same time, the enemy at the highest rank notices that. Unless there is camouflage and he doesn't even know there is a Moses around. But when the camouflage is gone, the enemy with the highest rank notices you. So what he's trying to do is all kind of worldly wisdom and tactics to push you down and keep you down. So, of course, the things initially will get worse because he wants to discredit you in front of others. And he questions your determination and courage. I remember when uh, we started this um, and um, the enemy was so furious of what I was doing in Romania and was screaming and trying all kind of tactics to uh, make me afraid and and he would come sometimes in open visions as like an old wise man and say okay let's talk let me tell you now you are a great man of god and God is going to do great things with you. But I'm going to tell you something. This friend of yours or your spouse, it's going to stop you. Or, uh, you know, you have some weakness. And that weakness, you're not going to be able to. I mean, it's like he would admit, he would come like a friend. He would sit right there by the bed and just advise you. How does he dare? <laughs> so instead of really going down and being disappointed, you should know that the enemy took you very seriously. And that's the moment that you, because of the Lord in you, you will shine. One of the books that I really like uh, in the Bible, it's, uh, it speaks to me, it does a lot of what the Lord did with my life uh, in different places. It's the book of Nehemiah. Um, he was the repair of breaches, which is something that the Lord spoke to me through Isaiah 58 a long time ago. But see, what I liked about, and if you want to read the book of Nehemiah, it's, it's so powerful. At one point, he goes there and he has the authority of the king at that time. But the people, the principality, the, the princes, the kings of the area where um, the city, the Jerusalem, had to be rebuilt, those people didn't recognize the authority of the king that he came from. Very interesting, right? So Nehemiah goes there and they know there's something with this guy that 
and they tried their tactics and listen to their tactics you'll see that and that's what the king of Egypt tried with Moses too and probably principalities and powers are trying with your mind messing with your mouth mind and maybe that's why you stopped maybe that's why you you put yourself down maybe that's why you put yourself on hold listen to what those guys try to do in Nehemiah 4 uh, verses 2 and 3. So he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, and this is uh, one of the princes, and he said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burnt? And Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him. This was, the first one was Sambalat. And he said, Whatever they build, even if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall interesting that they are checking see the the inner strength what are these feeble Jews will they fortify themselves they are checking their strength see how they doubt everything how they almost check the city the walls of the city make sure and that's the soul that's the city of, of Nehemiah's soul the inner strength, the military preparation, the religious, will they offer sacrifices? Are they ready to sacrifice, lay down their lives? That's the enemy checking on that. <laughs> and the purpose, the, the planning point, the vision, how far they can go. Can they really rebuild here? See, anything that's just kind of a, you try to do a pep talk to strengthen yourself, positive thinking, um, it's not going to make it. Oh, I'll do it. You'll see, devil. Oh, I'll be strong. And that's, it's not working. It, it, the enemy knows all these techniques. I mean, he's controlling all this psyche stuff. I mean, the enemy knows how to do this stuff. You have to be prepared with substance from inside out. And when the king of Egypt comes against and despises you, treats you like garbage, you have to know that you are sent by the Lord. You know that you know that you know. <laughs> Do not back down. No matter what all this wise guys try to come against you and check that, you will resist the devil. And he will flee from you. This is a, a moment of trial. The first dealing with this principality, this king, was a moment of trial. And Moses was prepared to go through. And so are you. Amen.